Hello and welcome to One More Pen. Today we are talking about One More Pen and this is not what you may think it is. It looks like a Lamy Safari. It's not a Lamy Safari. It's a Jinhao. I don't know what the model number is of this pen. I've actually tried to find it. I, I bought this off an online platform where you can buy all kinds of cheap pens. Uh, I won't mention the platform. It doesn't really matter. Um, I was curious about whether this is, you know, worth it. Um, does it come close to the Lamy Safari, which is basically what this is a copy of? Um, and is it is it any good? Does it even write? Um, I've bought plenty of cheap pens that were really rubbish that I could absolutely do nothing with and I had to basically throw them away. But then I've also had some really cheap pens that turned out to be really excellent writers and are absolutely worth it. So I wanted to know about this one and especially because I've been uh, recently looking really much into the, um, the Lamy Safari and I've been doing some reviews on the Safari, the All Star and the Alex. I thought this would be an appropriate time to explore and talk about this pen. It looks a lot like the Lamy Safari uh, from the outside except that there's no branding here. No, normally you would see Lamy on the Safari there. No branding on this pen, nothing this side, this side, absolutely nothing. But if you uncap it, it certainly looks like a Lamy Safari. But it isn't. I'm not crazy about these kinds of copies. I feel like it's not good business practice. It's not ethical business practice. Um, essentially what the company does is they take someone else's work everything that's gone into design and producing a product like this branding it marketing it uh, doing everything it is that a company does to create a successful product and sell it and then they ride this wave of success as long and as far as they can um, and they produce a really really cheap version which um, i suppose would sell pretty well i don't know actually how well this really sells i don't know if they sell at all i'm sure they must you know they must sell um because they they go really really cheap way way below what a long safari would cost um i'm a little conflicted about that on the one hand i feel like lamy is a little bit uh, pricey with their pens not ridiculously so but it's not it's not really on the cheaper end i think there are a lot of if we take the Lamy Safari, a lot of entry level pens there are um, at least as good, if not a little bit better in terms of the uh, build quality, etc. And um, Lamy outprices most of them. So I do think Lamy is sort of mm, the pricing on the high end of the range and almost at the point where I would say, no, it's it's not, not uh, really worth it. And then these guys come in and they price way below uh, the Lamy pens. Um, so I, I don't really approve of this kind of thing. Uh, I'm doing the review to see if it's really worth it. The problem is that if this pen writes really well, if it's if it's a fair product and it comes in at a low price, it's, it's going to sell and people are going to use it probably. Um, for those of us who really love pens and care about what we use, etc., um, probably we would be people like me I, I would look at this explore etc but it's not the kind of pen that i'm going to carry around because it matters to me what i write with um not it's not just about the writing experience it's also a little bit about the integrity and, and all of that if i'm going to a meeting and i'm taking a pen a nice writing pen with me and i have this one and i have the lamy safari you bet I'm going to take the original Safari. I won't be going with a Jinhao. And, uh, but I don't think Jinhao really cares about that. I think this is really about uh, making a quick product and riding that wave as far as I can. But is that a bad thing? I don't know. I guess these things are all subjective and it's, it's up to people who purchase these products to decide, you know, is this going to stay on the market? And it's not for me to judge. So we'll take a closer look at this pen. We'll do a writing sample. I had it inked up for a while. So I have a sense of what it's writing, uh, what it writes like. 
Uh, but I would like to show you. Please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's take a closer look. All right, let's have a closer look at this pen. This is a Jin Hao, not a Lamy Safari, but it looks very similar to the Safari. And I have one here so we can compare, although I don't want this to be about the comparison. I do feel like the clip, like I said, it may be slightly, slightly thinner, but it could even be my imagination, right? Uh, looking at the pen like this, it's almost identical. I do notice that the Safari is just a slight little bit longer in the barrel there and perhaps in the cap very slightly as well. But if you take them apart, it is not something that you would easily notice. On the uh, Lamy, we do have Lamy on the barrel, so we do have some branding there. But on the Jinhao, we have absolutely no branding at all. The finial, we just have a black plastic insert at the top, which I guess in a way mimics uh, the Safari, but not quite. We have very traditional Safari finial there. And at the bottom, also very, very similar with the, the round uh, sort of gap there. Uh, not identical, but close. And we have the, the ink window, which is pretty much identical. We uncap. We have a very familiar looking section with the facets that we know. Uh, that comes with the Safari and let's take a closer look at the Safari. We can see that that's pretty much identical right uh, it's interesting though the the um, semi transparent uh, section you tend to find on the all star and the LX version and usually not on the Safari and I do prefer this section so um, yeah I would say this is this is a very nice touch something I wondered about with these pins then uh, with the section is are they interchangeable uh, that would be my pins want to run away from here. That would really be lovely if I could simply take this section and put this on my safari, right? But it does not fit. So the threads do not match, so it's not interchangeable and you would not be able to do that, unfortunately. With, um, with this one, it came with a converter which is a nice touch. I, I do have to give this to Janelle. Most of their pens, in fact, I think all of them that I got came with a converter. And although it's not the most expensive converter in the world, they work. And it tells you that it is affordable to send your pen with a converter. And most other brands don't do that. So kudos to Janelle for that, right? For a, for a cheapie you are certainly giving the people what they want. Ink window works very nicely. This pen is already inked up. I'll talk about that in a second. And if we take a closer look at the nib, this is an extra fine nib. You can see the EF on the nib and comparing it to the Lamy Safari, very similar style nib. Are they interchangeable? I'm told that they are, I haven't tried it yet. So perhaps I will do that in another video. I don't want to mess around with the nibs today, but I'm told that they're interchange interchangeable. And these nibs are also available for purchase uh, in packs of five. And I have to say, I, I got a, a few of them. I got five of them just to try them out. And I paid for five nibs, I think, a fraction of what I would pay for one Lamy Safari nib. So if these nibs are interchangeable and if this works, that would be a problem for, for Lamy, I think. Anyway, we'll put the Safari aside and continue looking at this pen. Well, I think pretty much everything else then is very similar to the Safari, except absolutely no branding. 
I do think this is where Jean Hao is missing an opportunity. Um, they've already copied the design of this pen. I see absolutely no problem with them putting their name on there. It would distinguish the pen from Lamy and it, I think it would make a difference. But I guess that's not, that's not part of the strategy. So as for the bold quality of this pen, when we look inside the cap, we see something interesting. And that is that this is essentially a, a light or a white plastic on the inside and that it has essentially just been coated with paint. And that might not be easy to see on the camera, but if I hold this up to a window and there's light coming from the other side, I can actually see the light coming through and I can tell you that the layer of paint on this um, cap is very, very thin. And so if this pen scratches, the scratches will reveal the actual color of the plastic underneath and that's not going to look so great. Whereas with the Safari, we won't have that problem. We will have scratches you know, that are visible, but it's going to be red no matter what. Um, so you definitely feel a little bit of uh, the cheapness in this pen, but it's not, it's not a tremendous big difference. The clip is very stiff on this one, but it's functional. It will absolutely work and it will do its job. So build quality for this pen, it's not bad. It, it is definitely not the same as the Lamy Safari, but it's not bad either. So I think we should do a writing sample and I'm going to use my Rhodia dot pad as usual. Of course, it's just really excellent paper. Now this pen has been inked up for a week. I've been putting it through its bases and I inked it up with Hiroshizuku Yamabudo. I decided to use this ink because I haven't been using it that much recently. I think I can take it out of the box. So you can just see how lovely uh, this ink really is. There we go. I haven't used this recently and the other reason as well this pen is an extra fine I don't usually use extra fine nibs and I but I know that they tend to be a little bit more uh, scratchy or they produce a little bit more feedback because it's a extra fine nib and so I decided to use an ink that I know to be very well saturated and well lubricated as well so I know that this ink would go very well with a fine nib and oh beautiful anyway put that aside and let's do a writing sample so like I mentioned I don't know the model number for this but I know that it's a Jin Hao. Not sure what to call it, but it is an extra fine. And I can tell you that the nib is quite smooth. As expected, it's not very wet. For an extra fine though, I think it's quite decent. Let's do a little bit more writing with it.
Now this pen keeps up very well with writing. For an extra fine, I have to say that I am very pleasantly surprised. It does provide a little bit of feedback, but um, very pleasant feedback. It is certainly not scratchy. It's quite smooth actually on the paper. It is wet enough. Uh, it absolutely keeps up. I mean, we could. It's going to keep up with any kind of writing that you do. I think the kind of ink that you use probably will make a difference because it's an extra fine, but I think that goes for any kind of pen. So if you find the right kind of ink for this, I think a very nicely lubricated ink, I think this will provide a very pleasant writing experience. Forgetting for a moment that it's a copy of a Lamy Safari, and just talking about the pen on its own. It is a cheap plastic pen, but it performs, I think, well above its price range. Now, what is the price of this pen? I think you can go and have a look online. Um, they, the, the prices vary so much, but they are extremely low. Um, I would guess in the range of well, in my local South African currency, around 70 Rand, which would translate to, oh, my math is so bad at this, maybe three, $3, maybe $3 US for a pen like this, then I think it's not bad. I do hope that buying one of these would inspire someone to buy an original Lamy, because I think that is the right thing to do. Lamy, the, the design and the work on this thing and I think they deserve the credit um, for it. But for what this is, not a bad pen at all. I am very pleasantly surprised. The nibs, um, I notice, I tend to find them only in an extra fine or a fine. It would have been interesting if we had some um, more variation on nib sizes. That, that would have been an interesting development, but um, it is absolutely fine as it is. So, would I recommend this pen? Now, I, I have a problem recommending a pen that is an obvious fake. Um, so no, I, I don't really recommend this pen. I, I think we should support uh, Lamy. But if you feel like you wanted to purchase one of these, I think for what it is, it provides a very decent writing experience. I think maybe for a knock around pen, something that uh, you're going to, that you know, you know, you're going to be carrying with you and it's not going to be uh, something that's particularly well looked after. Or maybe as a first pen for a child, young person. Yeah, maybe. Why not? So, if you enjoy my videos, uh, please like and subscribe. I appreciate the support as always. And I will see you next time.